fintech or financial technology is all about innovation, disruption and transformation and will undoubtedly impact and shape the way financial institutions around the world operate. This includes digitizing processes that were previously handled with paper money and human interaction. The term financial technology can apply to any innovation in how people transact business from the invention of digital money to double entry bookkeeping. Fintech is not new. It's been around in one form or another virtually as long as financial services have. The rise of fintech has opened up a world of possibilities for many small businesses. Businesses can offer more services than ever and for a fraction of the price of what it would have cost before. Many experts believe forward-thinking entrepreneurs and business owners need to continuously keep up to date with fintech developments as a vital part of their daily life. Our guest on the show joins us to discuss how fintech can be used to reach more unbanked in the country. Enjoy the chat. Looking at um, where we are currently, according to FINA, which is the Organization for Enhancing Financial Literacy, the population uh, is uh, of the, the adult population in Nigeria is about 99.8 million, and about 63 are connected. They have access, which means we have another 33 million or more that are still not connected. So if you look at that statistics, I don't think we are doing badly. Maybe we could do better. Looking at the number of banks you've mentioned, how do you think we can bring them to the financial net using technology? Okay, part of the challenges that have been affecting that sector has to do with, first of all, awareness in terms of literacy. Uh, another one has to do with policy, you know, the policy from the government, how does, it, how does it enhance financial inclusion? The other one that has been affecting us is the lack of um, national identity. We don't have a national identity system because this whole financial inclusion thing, you know, is stronger in a place like Kenya where they are approaching about 90% 90, 90 inclusion now. And it's because every Kenyan has a national identity. In Nigeria, we have a multiplicity of databases. This bank has, that organization has, rather than a single one that everybody ties into. So that's another challenge. Another challenge is the fact that the cost of technology to the unbanked people who are the BOP, bottom of the pyramid, the cost is high for them. For those in the urban areas, it might not look like something that is big. But for those people, the cost is high. So these are the factors that are affecting their adoption. But more and more, we are addressing those factors with uh, technology. We are addressing them with awareness. And I'm sure that they, are, they will start to, to adopt and it will get better. It can only get better. From the policy side, what are some of the things that you would like to see that would help this process? Okay, uh, one of those policies is the fact that the central bank uh, said that by 2020, at least about 80% of the population, adult population, should be should be adopted. I mean, should should have a financial inclusion, and it's not just um, saying it. What one other thing that the CBN has done is to come up with a shared agent network forum, which the program they call SANEF where some organizations have been selected to roll out agency banking all over the country. Inlax is one of the countries that, that companies that, that were selected. And the, a target also has been set for us that at the end, end of every year, we must have a minimum of 10,000 agents. You know, so if you look at eight companies having 10,000 agents, that means that the possibility of onboarding about 80,000 agents every year is there. And by the time we do things like this, coupled with what the financial institutions themselves are doing, I'm sure it will help us to achieve that goal. Let's look at the impact of what has happened so far. How would you rate it? Well, the impact uh, up to now, I, I would say, has been felt in a measure. But some things have to change in the approach. I'll give you some examples. There are banks that have been operating in Nigeria for decades. There are banks that have been operating for several years. But if you put the total number of customers that banks have together, maybe 50 million out of a population of how many people? And how many years has it taken us to get to that level? 
So if that means that if you go at the same rate at which we were going before, it will take a lot of time. But with the new adoption of agency banking, some of the banks also are rolling out agents. I know a particular bank that advertised that they now have about 40,000 agents. One thing you will see, CFA, is that the era of um, rolling out bank branches, big bank branches, is over. The banks are not going to, to do that again. Agency banking is the way to go. So agency banking that you mentioned, does it leverage technology to function? Yes. So the, the benefit of the agency banking solution is it leverages every existing infrastructure. Everybody already has a mobile phone. Those mobile phones either uses USSD or SMS or uses internet. So with that, we're using existing infrastructure that is there. It is easy to reach so many people that are already having the tools with which, you know, gone are those days when in a home, it is rare to find one person that has a mobile phone. Now everybody has it. The taxi driver has it. The market woman has it. Because that tool is, is generally available to everybody, it is easy to use it to drive this penetration that we are talking about. Listening to a core tech provider, I'm, I'm wondering, the lines between a tech company and a financial institution as we know it, has it been blurred? Well, it's a good question, but one thing you would see is that the line is blurring between a technology company and all other institutions. Between whether it is manufacturing, whether it is a pharmaceutical, whatever it is, because technology is at the core of everything that we do now. And technology is causing a lot of disruption in several industries. And the financial sector also is not immune. So the, the way people used to see payments or payment services is changing. You know, gone are those days when until you get to a bank premises, you cannot do financial transactions. There are many people now that tell me that they've not been to a bank in the past one year. Their bank, their phone is their bank. <laughs> so, and it will not, it will continue to be like that. More and more of that will happen. So that is, is, is because of services like that that the lines are getting blurred. Finally, Femi, um, what role do you see emerging technologies such as blockchain, AI, and the rest of them playing in helping to deepen financial inclusion? Well, the, the role I see those new technologies playing is that they will enable us to scale. What used to take like a week or two weeks or three weeks before can take a day. They will enable scale, they will enable quality of service, and they will drive down costs. Because one, one, one thing you would discover is that the more new technologies come in, the more the prices are going down. So we'll have access to very technologies on the cutting edge but at a reduced cost. And it will make scale to be faster. We can reach millions of people much more easily. I mean, look at a technology like cloud. Before, if you had all your setup in the, on your premises, maybe only a few can reach it. But if you host it in the cloud, then it's global. Anybody, just like the internet, is a cloud <laughs> technology. We can be in Nigeria and accessing a server in the United States or the UK or whatever. That is how it is. A lot of people use the email. They don't even know where it is being hosted. <laughs> All they know is that they have access to that service and, and it is working for them. So that is the way it is. Scale. The local thing becomes global. Thank you for being on the show today. Thanks, it's been my pleasure. And you are doing some very good work. Please keep it up. That was Femi Adioti, CEO Inlax, who clearly believes that the fintech industry has made some progress, but there's certainly room for improvement. I agree that user education is also critical because some people feel better keeping their money outside the financial sector. Now, it's our hope that as technology improves, they will have greater confidence to get into the financial net. But let's bear this in mind, the security of username, passwords, accounts, PIN codes would remain a challenge that the industry would have to constantly find ways to deal with. Because with the increase in adoption comes the increase in cybercrime. That's our show for today. Remember, we we'll live on social media at Tech Trends TV. You can check out this and previous edition of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via cfablog.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukwemeka Agbata. <laughs> <laughs>